Jesus says that I have uh, prepared a mansion for you and there are many many mansions also available there. So we say that the rest of the mansions would be the followers of the rest of the prophets of the creator. So we agree with that, right? We say that Jesus was a mighty prophet. Uh, you know, he said many, many times that I am a prophet of God in the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In Matthew, it says, chapter 13, verse number 57, Jesus is saying, I am a prophet of God. In John, chapter 4, verse number 44, Jesus said, I am a prophet of God. In Luke, chapter 13, verse 33, he says, I am a prophet of God, right? And uh, in uh, Mark chapter 6, verse number 4, Jesus says, I am a prophet of God. So we believe that Jesus was a prophet the way that he said. His message was to invite people to worship one God, as I quoted, Mark 12, verse number 29. He used to fast, he used to, uh, he used to pray, and uh, he used to worship the same creator. So with all of these combined, we say that Jesus' message was the message of inviting people to the worship of one God. Thank you, brother. Right, thank you. Thank you, brother. Is another question? Sure. This is going to be our last question. We are running out of time. Thank you so much. So I have a lot of questions, so I'll, I guess I won't be able to ask them. Could you explain briefly the difference between the Sunni and the Shia? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Most <laughs> no, you know what? We had like hundreds of open houses all across the USA. An open house is not complete without that question coming. Right? I'm serious. I was waiting. Come on, who's going to ask that question? Right? You did. So briefly, right? Because then we have to pray our second prayer of the day. And then, you know, there's some gifts coming to all of you, hopefully. So, so the question is, Sunni and Shia, what about them, what are the differences? So quickly, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he was alive, he was, uh, he was the head of the state and he was a prophet. But after he passed away in the year 632, Muslims have to appoint a new head of the state. Not a new prophet, because the Quran says in chapter 33, verse number 40, that Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is the final prophet, he is the seal of the prophets. So to appoint a new head of the state, there were two groups, two groups of Muslims. The bigger group, they would like to appoint someone who was the most eligible, his name was Abu Bakr. The second group, they want to appoint someone who is also eligible, his name was Ali. And he was the son-in-law and the cousin of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? Both of these individuals, they were eligible. It so happened that Abu Bakr was appointed as the very first caliph or the very first successor as the head of the state. So the small friction between the two groups, it's not based upon theology, it was initially based upon politics. However, in the Quran, it does not say ever that you know these people are called as Sunnis, these are Shias. The only label God has given in the Quran for the followers of Islam in chapter 22 verse number 78 is the word Muslim. The word Muslim. So if you ask me the question, okay Sabir, who are you? Uh, are you a Sunni or a Shia? I would say that I am a Muslim, right? However, some of you or some people, they may think that the Sunnis and the Shias, if I have to label them, that they, are, that they are analogous to the Protestants, the Catholics, the Mormons, and other uh, sects of, uh, you know, your faith. However, that's not the case. All the Muslims all over the world, we have the same one concept of God. There is only one God, no partners to him. One concept of God. But when you look into different Christian groups and sects, we say, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't believe, they don't believe in the triune concept of God. Protestants and Catholics, you do. So there is a difference when it comes to the main belief, who is God. When it comes to the Quran, the scripture, all the Muslims are unanimous that there is only one Quran in Arabic all over the world. Not different versions of the Quran in Arabic. But our Christian brothers and sisters, you may have different versions of the Bible. The Catholics may have 73 books in there, Protestants 66 books in there, Greek Orthodox you may have 78 books in there. 
So again, Muslims are united with our scriptures also. The way that Muslims pray, we pray a similar way anywhere in the whole world. You know, I have never been to China. If I go to China, I would feel at home in a mosque. They will pray exactly the same way that they pray in this mosque over here. But if you go to a Catholic church, a Jehovah's Witness, a Mormon, a Protestant church, they may have their worship in a different way concept of the hereafter, right? So all of these uh, main fundamentals combined, Muslims, we are, we are united in it. Uh, however, then your question can be, how come there is some friction between, you know, some Sunnis, some Shias, and some groups around the world? I would say that friction or those wars and the discord, it is because it's a human problem. It's not a Muslim or Islamic problem. Humans, we fight. What's going on in Ukraine, may Allah, God bring peace, not only there, but all places of the world, right? People fight because of historical vengeance, because of oil, because of land, because of, you know, uh, culture, nationality, people fight. So we say it's a, it's a, it's a human problem. So when it comes to uh, Sunnis and the Shias, we say they're all Muslims as long as we follow the basic tenets of Islam. All right? Oh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, we have five more. I requested for five more minutes. Oh, five more minutes. Five more minutes. Okay. But uh, I want you guys to decide that which one, which one would you like to spirit to elaborate, terrorism or Sharia? Well, both of them are hard topics, you know. Terrorism or Sharia. Or, or women in Islam. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Why not? Okay, you want to read, you can take a face. And I took, I, 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 so I took a hard and I gave it a five more minutes. Okay, by the way, the raise of hands, who would like to go for the Muslims, for me, to explain about uh, violence and terrorism, right? Show of hand. Okay, show of hand, who would like me to elaborate on the topic of women in Islam. And who would like me to go with the topic of? Sharia. Sharia. What? And what about the rest of you? <laughs> you don't care, I guess, right? We have to have a flip a coin with a three-sided coin now. <laughs> They're all equally. Okay, and sister, you decide. Which topic? That's what he was going to talk about? I could, yeah. Okay. I took the group, so whatever you say is good. Okay, good, good. Uh, you know, honestly, all these topics are important. Uh, there was a there was a survey by 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 USA Today. According to the survey, the number one misconception people have about Islam is about women in Islam, right? And the next one was about Sharia, then about violence and whatnot. But let's speak about the violence part because many of you you may not be aware, right? Now it's really important when it comes to uh, violence, extremism, terrorism, let me just say plain, simple, black and white, that terrorism is an act by a human being. That human being can be of any faith or no faith, Muslims don't have a monopoly on it. Really important, right? Muslims don't have a monopoly on it. Any person from any background, they can do acts of terrorism, you know, when we when we look at, unfortunately, there have been 4,406,000 4, killing by gun violence in this country in the last 15 years. And I would say that every single one of them is an act of terrorism. You know, when they labeled January 6th, they say many of the people, you know, what, what's going on here? They want to topple the government and they want to use force. We say that's also an act of terrorism, right? So we can have a long list of acts of terrorism. No one group, no one faith has a monopoly on it. They are good and bad people in the followers of all the faiths. Second important point is, if we believe, okay, this is by the show of hand. How many of you believe that every human life is equal and precious? That's what I expected by the way, right? If that is the case, that means we as humans, we have to condemn any and all acts of terrorism, no matter who does it, with any weapon, with any intention, with any process. 
equally we have to condemn every single act of violence and terrorism not only done by those who are from the muslim background so equally we have to condemn what is going on in india there's a genocide going on in india by some people not all the hindus by the way by some people there on the muslim minorities we have to equally condemn those buddhists who have done a genocide on the muslims in myanmar we have to equally condemn those from the jewish background who are committing atrocities on some muslims up there and we have to condemn any muslim who are doing acts of terrorism on followers of other faiths or no faiths but one important thing that i want to bring is that when a muslim is doing it obviously we we muslims we condemn it but we also have to look at why are some people some muslims in some countries are doing the acts of terrorism right i can quote you dr robert pepe who is a who is a professor from chicago and he said so he wrote a book called dying to win and he studied terrorism for the last 25 years and he saying in that book it is not the quran it's not the muslim culture it is not muhammad peace be upon him it is the occupation of the us forces on the on the muslim lands that is the number one cause of terrorism in those lands second evidence i can give is you know the there were two drone missile operators who came on the tv and they said that we miss 90% of our targets and those missed targets they land on innocent people on women and children and in on the schools and those people the family members who are surviving now they became emotional and mad at america americans or anyone else because their family members they have been gunned down by the drone missiles so because of that those drone missile operators are saying we are the ones who are creating terrorists in those countries so we have to condemn everyone right however what i would say is we cannot judge islam based upon the actions of some you know not so good practicing muslims we have to look into the teachings of islam so when we pick up a copy of the quran and when we look into the life of prophet muhammad peace be upon him you can find out you know islam stands against violence and terrorism in fact there is a passage in the quran chapter number 5 verse number 32 in there and i can just give a loose translation it says in there that taking one life is like taking the life of all of humanity and saving one life is like saving the life of all of humanity so i would say that this is not just a christian life or atheist life a hindu life allah god is saying every life is equal that means we have to protect and save god every single life so when you look into the quran and the life of prophet muhammad peace be upon him you will find out that islam wants to unify humanity with the worship of one god eradicate violence and and all the uh, you know extremism and bring humanity so we can live as uh, live as brothers and sisters and make this world a better place thank you very much thank you uh the sunni shia uh, question will always be there cuz people are curious how can you claim to be so united but then have two different groups but i do love and we i think we all acknowledge that muslims are the most united religion i i don't even think anyone can debate against that and the unity is something i will always admire our unity is something that the rest of us can learn from or not our unity their unity is something the rest of us can learn from and it it's just so inspiring if you're not inspired by how united the muslims are then i don't know what also inspire you uh, concerning the bad seeds of every religion culture group whatever it is that you want um those should always be caught out just because funny said one thing it doesn't mean the rest of the zambians should be condemned based on what funny said and um we should seek to correct certain things but if we can't we just i guess let the bad seeds be bad seeds continue rotting and let the good that the rest of us do um overshadow the bad that's done by one or two bad people 
uh let me know what you guys think about this video make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it to the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video